for its moss-draped cypress, tucked away cabins, and water reflections that could slay the Greek hunter Narcissus. Bayou Corn is where you can go quite some time without hearing a single word. You look at the bayou, the water's still nice, the trees are still green, the, the gators are still lurking, the egrets are still catching fish. A slice of Assumption Parish still quiet after all these years, only now for the wrong reasons. The saddest thing for me is uh, the loss of the people that were living here. You know, we lost all those neighbors, all, they were all good friends. 12-year resident Dennis Landry says they were all here before Bubbles and Burps belted this bayou until the outer wall of the nearby underground salt cavern caved in. The crude oil and methane gas filtered up as the ancient rock and trees began their descent some 750 feet. Before that sinkhole ate up nearly 37 acres of this community, Bayou Corn boasted a population of just about 350. Today it stands at about a dozen. You know, we have the stigma of the sinkhole hanging over us. That day, August 3rd of 2012, Governor Bobby Jindal ordered the residents of Bayou Corn to evacuate as officials burned the midnight oil, trying to solve the most terrifying parts of this puzzle. The unknown, the unknown of what what is occurring, will it um, travel this far out to the residential area? Will the highway get affected? Many of those answers didn't come for another four years once the sinkhole finally slowed in its movement. That ultimately led the state to lift its evacuation order in 2016. But many never came back, fearing more collapses to come. Texas Brine, the company operating the failed cavern, agreed to buy out their property, the value of which had fallen with the land itself. I've actually checked with several of the local banks to see if they would loan money on property here at Bayou Corn and uh, I've been turned down multiple times by different institutions. And now I have a home, a three bedroom brick home that uh, was probably worth in the neighborhood of $300,000 that is now unsaleable. For those who remained through the evacuation order, Texas Brine gave weekly checks of $875. Not enough, says Bob Deaton, who's lived on this bayou since 2006. He and six other residents are still seeking more compensation. And they have taken the position that because they paid uh, weekly disaster assistance, that they don't owe us anything that they've already paid. Texas Brine maintains that its actions alone did not cause the sinkhole, that a well drilled in 1986 by Occidental Chemical is to blame. Earlier this year, a state district judge found Texas Brine 35 percent at fault, OxyChem 50 percent, and Vulcan Materials 15 percent. In a statement to us, Texas Brine says, we look forward to operating in Assumption Parish for years to come. We remain actively involved in the community and will do our very best to be a good corporate neighbor. But with dozens of abandoned homes being demolished through the fall and little hope of construction, Landry questions whether he'll someday have no neighbors left. Still, he doesn't regret that choice he made six years ago to keep his piece of the land still standing. This is a hard place to uh, replace. And I, I thought immediately, I said, man, if we evacuate here and we leave, we'll never find a place directly on the bayou, directly on the water, as beautiful as this is. So I wasn't willing to give up my sportsman's paradise here at Bayou Corn. And he hopefully won't have to, says Assumption Parish Emergency Preparedness Director John Boudreau, who claims new monitoring will help sink the bio's risk of sinkholes for the years to come. Things are quiet. Hopefully it stays that way and uh, life moves on. In Assumption Parish, Harrison Golden, Local 33 News.